Now, is it bad to use subtitles? No, of course not. You shouldn't feel bad if you have to use subtitles and we're gonna talk more about that. But it is important that you strive to or you work towards not needing to rely on subtitles. Because basically this is going to help you to, in general, be a better listener in English. So when you get into situations where you need to rely on being able to understand without subtitles, like an in-person conversation, that you feel okay, you feel confident to understand. And there's a lot of really fun ways that you can do this. We're going to be looking at a six step process that you can use TV series and movies to do this. Many learners rely on subtitles when watching TV series or movie, and they want to be able to enjoy their favorite media even without the subtitles, just like they do in their native language. But try as they may, they still will struggle to understand 100% of what they're watching if they don't have that crutch or that help, the subtitles. And I would add to that, Ethan, that when it comes to improving your listening of movies and TV shows, less is more. I'm going to explain more about that, what I mean, but I really do believe that, guys. Less is more. You'll see. And also, before we get into it, I want to let you know that if you're watching this on Spotify, Apple, or another podcast platform, or on YouTube, you're just getting a small taste of the entire value, all the learning that we go into in the entire podcast episode, which usually are 35 to 45 minutes. You will exclusively find that on the Real Life English app, along with a, an intelligent digital or actually interactive transcript and so many tools that are going to help you to go deeper and never forget all the things that you are learning with us. So you can check it out for free by looking for Real Life English in your favorite app store or simply click the link down in the description below. All right, so we're going to be giving you a six step process that will help you to stop relying on subtitles. So the first one, maybe this will be surprising to some people is that not all series are created equally when it comes to learning a language. So you need to pick the right series. And I really would say this is like the Goldilocks fable. If people are familiar with Goldilocks and the three bears, that you don't want a series that's too hard. You don't want a series that's too easy. You want a series that is just right. Now, what is just right? That means that if you understand, let's say 30%, so you're catching some words, but you feel very lost. You're not catching the general meaning. That means it's probably too hard. If you understand 90%, so you're understanding the, all the meaning that's going on within the scene, even though you might miss a word or two, then that's too easy. So you're better off being in the 50 to 60% range. So that means that understanding about half of it. So you might be missing quite a bit, but you can pick up enough, you can get some of the meaning, and you want to choose a series that you're going to enjoy. So if you choose a series just because you've heard it's a great series, but you don't actually enjoy it, then you're not going to stick with it, right? And uh, I like what you're saying about picking the right series because maybe you feel frustrated because you can't understand much of that show, but we, we see that you are watching Game of Thrones, for example, which is full of ancient, more archaic language and very specific terminology for, from the story. So yeah, that's going to be a different experience than watching maybe a sitcom that is more day-to-day -day English. I know a lot of learners panic when they only understand 50% of something, but start saying this is something positive because it means you have room to grow. It means that it's going to be a challenge for you, so you'll have a good amount to learn there. All right, step two is to watch the scene with subtitles. And by the way, I said scene, so this is one scene. You're not watching an entire episode. And this is because we're training here. Think of this as a training, the same way that you would go to the gym and you would do a routine for your muscles. We're not just passively sitting back and relaxing a series. This is active learning time. So we're going to start with small parts. I really like that. It, it goes back to what I said at the beginning about less is more, because you are focusing on one specific bit of that episode and you are dissecting as much as you can from that clip. Just to give you a personal story here, about 20 years ago when I was learning English myself, guys, 20 years ago, okay, early 2000s, we didn't have streaming services then. And I was 18 years old. I was working my first job. And I remember vividly when I got my first paycheck ever in my life, I ran to the blockbuster around the corner to get some, uh, to get a, a DVD box set of Smallville season one. It was a TV show that I digged back then. And the, the box was really beautiful. And it had about five or six DVDs on it because it was about 20 episodes per season. But that box was really expensive. 
So uh, I wasn't going to be able to buy another season for at least, I don't know, four or five months because I was working my first job. I wasn't making much money. And those DVD box sets were really expensive. So I would look at that first season, all those five DVDs that I had acquired and say, wow, awesome. This is what I got for the next four or five months. And I listened to those episodes over and over and over and over again. So repetition is really important here. So I would add to that, not only focusing on just specific bits of the episode or just a few episodes, but also um, watching them or watching that scene or watching those episodes multiple times. I'm not talking about three times. I'm talking about 10 times, 20 times, because I guarantee that by the 20th time you watch that clip or that episode, you will feel like, hey, I understand 90% of this thing. Of course, because you have been listening to it for the next, I don't know, one, two months. Yeah, so it's a nice way to trick your brain as well. Yeah, and uh, you are really beating those sounds into your head by consuming the same content over and over again. I wanted to point out a couple of things there before we move on to step number three, which I think what you just said segues perfectly into that. But I wanted to point out some connected speech. I really like how you say over and over. So it's not over and over, it's over and over. And you said that you remember this story, this memory vividly. What does that mean, mm -hmm. vividly? It's so clear in our mind, that memory, that it's almost like a movie that is playing in our mind. You, you remember everything, what the day looked like, how you felt, the visual details of that memory. Because vivid means bright, colorful, like a vivid sunset is one that it's really beautiful because it's so full of pinks and purples and oranges and a vivid memory. I like how you said that. It's like a movie. It's playing in your head. All right. So step number three is taking notes of anything that you didn't understand, which I would use like a note taking app on my phone, but you could use pen and paper if you're old fashioned. So you might just try to catch any any bits that you saw the words there, but you couldn't actually understand how the person said that because that's probably pointing to connected speech or some word that you're not that's being pronounced in a way that you're not expecting as well as any new words expressions grammar even so anything for you that stood out to you as something that you're not understanding yet or that could be a learning opportunity there i'm sure you've been learning many nice words in today's lesson right but let me ask you something do you think you will be able to remember all this vocabulary a week from now well, if you don't come back to these words and review them, chances are you will forget them. But there is a very effective learning technique that you can use to remember all these words and expressions from today's lesson. This technique is called space repetition. Space repetition is a learning technique that involves reviewing and revisiting information at increasing intervals over time. The basic idea is to expose yourself to the information you're trying to learn in a way that optimally reinforces your memory. And we have made it easy for you to incorporate space repetition in your learning with the Real Life English app. With the app, you can learn tons of words, phrasal verbs, and expressions with our cutting-edge technology that helps you review the words you're trying to remember by presenting the new vocabulary to you at strategic times. Thousands of learners have already benefited from our app, and you can be the next one. So if you want to go from feeling like a lost, insecure English learner to becoming a confident, natural English speaker who actually remembers the new words you learn, download the Real Life English app right now. The app is free to download and try, and once you download the app, make sure you take our free training, the Fluency Challenge. The Fluency Challenge will teach you how to use the app to learn new vocabulary faster using space repetition. I'm gonna leave the link to the app here, up here or in the description of this video. Or if you prefer, you can also go to Google Play Store or Apple App Store, search for Real Life English and download the app from there. All right, we have a shout out to Ibrahim, who actually left this comment over on the blog over at reallifeglobal.com. So they say, hello guys, I'm from Egypt. I love you guys more than you can imagine. I knew this community since 2020, and you really helped me improving my English like tenfold. English was a big obstacle for me since I was a kid, but now it's a piece of cake. I'm continuing my journey with you until the end. I wish I could have a shout out to feel like I'm part of this magnificent family. So it's our pleasure to give you a shout out, Ibrahim. Thanks so much for 
following us and for digging what, everything that we're doing for you all. Uh, yeah. Great. And then step number four is to take these notes that you got and to research. So you're going to be looking up, of course, all the new vocabulary and expressions that you didn't already know. Highly recommend ChatGPT for these because you can actually ask for what does this word mean in this context? What does this expression mean in this context? Because a lot of times, depending on word or expression can have different uses. And for pronunciation, anything you took note of that you didn't understand, even though you understood the words in the subtitles, you might go over those parts again, like Tiago was saying, with repetition, watching over and over again to really catch how did that person say it and even imitate saying out loud so that you can be improving your muscles articulation, your own pronunciation. And final thing I wanted to point out is some tools I found really useful for pronunciation are Forvo and Rhino Spike. These are both websites. I believe they have apps as well. What you can do on these sites is you can search for a word or an expression and it'll give you words and sentences with this and you can hear natives, real natives who have recorded themselves from all over the world saying this. So this is especially great if you're learning some particular accent, but it can help you to hear this being said in different ways, which really will open up your ears. I love how deliberate that sounds because we are really talking about activating your English here, not leaving your English, which is just consuming content passively, but really activating it, studying with those clips to improve your listening skills. I get this situation more often than not with my students. Sometimes I am in a class and then uh, I, I ask the student, hey, so what did you do last week to practice your English? And then the person says, oh, I watched this nice three minute video, Chago, in English. And then I say, cool, uh, what's the video about? And then the person sometimes goes, oh, let me remember. Um, oh, I think the person was talking about this, this and that. You know, it's a very vague kind of shallow answer. For me, as a teacher, that's the first clue, like, uh, okay, maybe that was more passive consumption that you had there. Mm -hmm. And then I ask a second question. What word or expression do you remember from that video that you learned? And then I usually catch them there, like, oh, ooh, I didn't take notes because I was watching it when I was at the gym or I was driving or I was doing something else. So, guys, it's really important to differentiate between living your English and activating your English, you need both. All right, and step five is to actually study. So take these notes that you had and throughout the week, you are deepening them. So if it's vocabulary or expressions, you might want to do some different things that are going to help you to memorize. If it's pronunciation, you might be practicing every single morning in the mirror, saying certain phrases that you are struggling with so that you can start to, again, build those muscle articulation, open up your ears to different sounds and so on. And when it comes to studying vocabulary, you have to be using spaced repetition software. This is a type of technology that works along with your brain to help you to really etch into your memory these new, really anything you want to learn. It doesn't just come to language learning, but when we're speaking about learning English, to really drill into your brain these new words and expressions that you're learning. So you can use tools like Memrise and Anki for this. These are ones that I've both used because you can take your custom lists of things that you're learning and put them in there. If you have the time, it's even better if you can look up pictures, even find a, a bite of someone saying a word because you can add pictures and audio to these and that's going to even deepen your relationship with these words even more. And of course, on the Real Life English app, we also have spaced repetition software. So if you're listening to this podcast, you can use that to never forget these new words and expressions you're learning with us here today. And we already have done all the hard work for you with picking the words, finding the pictures, there's pronunciation on there. Are there any other tools you would say are come in handy for this step, Tiago? Before I, I, I share one more thing about that, I want to ask you about a word you used. You said etch, to etch the vocabulary into your memory. What does it mean when something is etched into your memory? Remember in Friends, in Joey and Chandler's apartment, they have an etch-a-sketch that's always there with a different drawing. This is a toy, I think from like the 60s. It's a very old toy that had two knobs on it and you can make a drawing with this. But it's called an Etch-A-Sketch because you're etching something on there. So when you etch something, you're it's almost the act of drawing, but on something that's a hard surface that you're actually having to push down into to make letters or to make an engraving. Mm -hmm. So it's like you are engraving something, right? Exactly. And I'm using it in a figurative sense, like you were scratching those into your brain so you would remember them. I did that a lot with music, actually, improving my listening with music, because I remember sometimes I was on the bus 
going to work many years ago, listening to a song, and then I would hear a line that I didn't, I wouldn't understand what the singer was singing there, but the line sounded cool to me. I would kind of take a mental note of that part of the song, and then whenever I had a chance, I would print out, yeah, guys, print out, okay, uh, the lyrics back then. <laughs> <laughs> give you give you away my age here, yeah. And then I would see later the words from that line. More often than not, I will realize that hey, I understand this line when I read it, but I didn't understand it when I heard it because my ears were not trained enough yet to pick up how that line sounded. But it was cool because when I read the line, it kind of etched. It was etched upon my memory. Like you know, I really had that line in my mind. And then the next time I would listen to that song, when that part came up, I would hear the sound and immediately activate that line that I had read already. So the final step here is a couple days later. So you have watched the scene, you've uh, taken note of all the important things that you need to learn. You've studied those things and then you're gonna come back a couple days later and watch again without subtitles and test how much you've understood. As you're doing this more and more, and your comprehension's getting better, you could even do this in a shorter amount. So you could do this all in one sitting, that you watch it with subtitles, you do all those steps, and then you watch it without subtitles. This is exactly how we teach you on our Learning with TV series channel. If you haven't checked that out, we make this whole process very easy for you, but you can completely customize it with these six steps to whatever content you wanna learn with. And if you do this regularly, you're gonna find that over time, you're starting to understand even without the subtitles. I know that most learners nowadays, they are kind of jumping from content to content, right? Like, you know, you watch, you listen to this podcast and then you immediately go to the next one. So I would say focus more on one podcast episode at a time, one video at a time, one movie at a time, and stay with that piece of content for a few weeks at least, two weeks, three weeks, even a month. Yeah, and practice only with that. Oh yeah, global citizens. I just want to tell you, in case you don't know, that this lesson was taken from the Real Life English podcast. However, it was just a clip from the full episode. If you want to access the full lesson and learn even more with us, make sure you download the Real Life app. See you there!